I love talking about food and estrogen dominance in perimenopause because I know how quickly you can feel so much better with just a few small changes. The key is consistency because not only will these food changes help you with your estrogen dominance in perimenopause, but they will help you with your entire peri to postmenopause transition and beyond. And that's because the foods that we are focusing on are promoting better gut, liver and bowel health. When it comes to hormones and estrogen, these three organs are essential as we metabolize excess estrogen in the gut, we detoxify it through two different liver pathways and then we eliminate it via the bowel. And these three organs will underpin your entire hormonal journey as well as your long-term health, especially in regards to inflammation and chronic disease. So I really do encourage you to take on these suggestions as lifestyle changes. And I fear I might have misled you, but in a good way. It's really five food groups that I am talking about. But that's okay because you get a lot more variety of foods to help. So let's jump straight in. First up is pre and probiotic fiber. This of course is all about the gut and recolonizing it with good bacteria so that it can do its job of clearing out excess estrogen. Our standard Western diet tends to be too high in sugar, refined carbohydrates and ultra processed foods. And when we eat those foods, we upset the delicate balance of bacteria. Bad bacteria take over and we end up with dysbiosis. And from that place, we can't metabolize estrogen properly. So by including probiotic foods in our diet, we can help to reestablish that balance of bacteria bacteria within the gut. So that means eating foods like kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, miso, natto, yogurt, and raw apple cider vinegar. If you don't like fermented foods or you struggle with histamine tolerance, a probiotic supplement might be a better choice. With probiotic supplements, you do get what you pay for. So please try to buy the best quality probiotic that you can afford that has lots of uh, strands of different bacteria within it. But in addition to having lots of healthy bacteria in the gut, we have to feed them and that's the role of prebiotic fibers. So that's foods like Jerusalem artichoke, chicory root, onions, garlic, leek, apple, asparagus. So we also want to be including lots of those types of foods for ultimate gut health as well. Next up for gut health, we're looking at collagen. So you might've heard about collagen in regards to hair, skin and nails, but it's also really good for the gut. Collagen helps to repair the mucosal lining, so the gut wall. When we eat those inflammatory foods like the sugars and the ultra processed foods, they break down the gut lining and the gut wall and collagen helps to repair or reverse this damage. But it's also super important for detoxification it's rich in glycine and it's a precursor for glutathione, both of which are needed for liver detoxification. My favorite way to consume collagen is with bone broths, but I did do an entire video on collagen that includes a lot of other foods that you could try. I will link to it up above. So if you haven't seen that, do check it out next. Okay, third on our list is cruciferous vegetables. So that means broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, leafy greens, Brussels sprouts, those kinds of vegetables. And of that list, broccoli or better still if you can get it broccoli sprouts are my preferred choice cruciferous vegetables are rich in a compound called dim and we need dim to clear that excess estrogen but they're also incredibly rich in fiber so they support the gut and the bowel but the reason i love broccoli um even more so broccoli sprouts is they are rich in sulforaphane which supports phase one and phase two liver detoxification so estrogen has to be detoxed through two different liver pathways and they both have to be working optimally in order to clear that estrogen and uh, so for your fame helps support that. A lot of people ask me about dim supplementation and like all good health questions, the answer is, it depends. But make sure you are subscribed because in my next video in this series on estrogen dominance, I am talking all about um, DIM and other remedies, herbs, natural supplements, etc., to help support estrogen dominance. Okay, fourth on the list is sulfur rich foods. We want to be eating sulfur rich foods to support the liver and particularly that phase two detoxification. And sulfur rich foods includes anything from the onion family, particularly red onions, but all onions, leeks, uh, chives, garlic, and shallots. Again, cruciferous vegetables, they're all rich in sulfur, as to our eggs. Also look at including bitter foods, so your watercress, endive, radicchio, rocket or arugula. They all contain sulfur and they support the liver as a whole as well as those detox pathways. And finally, the fifth food group is phytoestrogens. So a lot of people think that if they have estrogen dominance, they shouldn't be eating phytoestrogens, but phytoestrogens actually help to balance estrogen levels, whether it's high or it's low. And 
And in addition to that, they help to clear out those environmental or xenoestrogens that we're exposed to daily. So a really important food group to be eating. I have three favorite phytoestrogens. The first is pomegranate, because in addition to being a phytoestrogen, it supports the liver and it's rich in antioxidants. I also love maca because it's an adaptogen that helps us adapt to stress and it also gives us loads of energy. And finally, flax seeds. So flax seeds are rich in fiber. So they're rich in both soluble and insoluble fiber. So they support the gut, they support the liver and they help to balance estrogen levels. So I've given you a lot of food suggestions there and I don't want you to become overwhelmed with this. What I suggest is asking yourself this simple question, what can I do to make this better? That's what I do when I'm making a meal, asking myself, what can I do to make this better? And it usually involves just adding one small thing from these food groups. So yesterday I had salmon with the skin on and I had it with asparagus and broccoli salad that had some red onion in it. So I had the collagen from the salmon. My salad had cruciferous vegetables and prebiotic fiber and sulfur rich foods. When I asked myself, what can I do to make this better? It was simply adding something that was probiotic. So it was, it just meant a spoonful of sauerkraut on the side. I'm a huge fan of keeping things really simple. So I hope that question, how can I make this better helps you too. However, sometimes making things better does include adding in some natural remedies, supplements, herbs, that type of thing. That is what I am talking about in this next video. So make sure to grab that too.